All right, in this video, I was fortunate enough to be on the phone with one of our customers in Kentucky. He was having problems uh, getting his seal not to leak on his Series 90 pump. So we're going to do him the favor, and uh, we're going to fix his pump for him. It's about 10 years old, so I get to get a little more dirty than I normally do. Uh, and we're just going to start tearing it apart, and we'll inspect it as we go. All right, we're going to start by inspecting everything. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the impeller off. And uh, we'll get our screwdriver and ratchet in here. I'll turn it a little bit towards you, John. If you notice on this one, the impeller nut is way inside the impeller. So sometimes you'll have to use an extension on your ratchet. All right, so get it in here. A little force on the screwdriver so it doesn't spin on you. Pull it back and loosen the nut. Okay. Sometimes they can be tough to get to. And sometimes you might have to go get your extension and put it on and unscrew it by hand. There we go. All right, take the nut off. Okay, so normally after I loosen the impeller nut, I would come back here and undo the four bolts on the motor bracket side of this cover plate. But because we're inspecting it for the customer and I want to make sure that everything was put back together properly, properly, I am going to just take it off piece by piece and we'll go from there once we get to each section and we'll work at it that way. All right, so now we'll slide the impeller off the shaft. Just grab it and start wiggling and it pops right off. And then if you heard that in my mic, the lock washer is still inside the impeller area here. So I'm going to pop that out. We'll put it with the uh, locking nut and we'll set them aside because we're going to reuse those. Now we'll take a look at the impeller. Look at the back to make sure there's no grooving right here. This should be a solid piece. This washer that comes off of the spring should be able to sit on the back of that just fine. No grooves, no pits, no nothing. If you also notice the impeller is good and round so it sits on the shaft of the motor good so it's reusable. There's nothing wrong with the impeller. Same with the front side. No big dings, no terrible wear. So we'll set it aside and reuse it. Now this is part of the seal kit. And the spring is part of the seal kit. And we're not going to reuse the seal kit. We're just going to change it. I don't like to reuse seal kits or gaskets. So these get set aside and we'll throw them away. All right, at this point in time, I want to make sure that he's got the mechanical part of the seal installed properly. Now I'm going to remove the cover plate slash motor bracket off so I can slide it forward and keep the seal intact so I can inspect it and see how he installed it and where the problem might be with the seal kit. So we'll get our wrench and we'll undo all four of these bolts and then we'll slide the cover plate away from the motor. And set these aside because we're going to reuse them. Now, this might separate kind of easy, which I can put a screwdriver in here. Just kind of pry it off, because I want to try to keep that seal intact. And if this doesn't work, I can use my puller, which I just might do because it has the tendency to pull it off straighter than I can pry it off. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the puller, because I want to keep that seal intact. So we'll get our puller in here. And if you notice, when I was taking out those four bolts from the motor, great. There's a guy that I finally ran into that didn't over-tighten his bolts when he mounted it back together. All right, we snug it up in the end of the shaft. And then we'll just hand crank the cover plate off. And if you notice, it's coming off nice and straight. That way the seal will be in good shape when it comes out of there. And then we can take a look and see if it was cracked or installed wrong or anything like that. He had also made mention that he changed the shaft sleeve on this too, which we'll inspect once I get this taken apart. All right, John, here it comes. All right, I'm going to stop there and I'm going to do the rest by hand because it looks like it might fall off. We'll get the puller out of the way. And if you notice, the carbon side of the seal is just getting ready to fall off the shaft, so I'm going to reach in here and pull it away. 
Well, there's part of the problem right there. His carbon is not in here. He's missing the carbon side of his seal. All right, we've got the carbon side of the seal off. And if you remember, he doesn't have the carbon in here. He only has the outer ring. So I'll bring our seal kit in here, and I'll show you what I mean. And I've said it in every video. If you look at my fingers, they're dirty. You're not going to hurt the seal kit by touching it as long as they're not all full of grease and oil and filthy rotten. Now, this is the cover plate side of the seal. I'm going to set this aside for right now. We'll get into that in a little bit. And that's separate. It's actually two pieces. But I'll set that aside right now. And this rubber gasket goes with it. So we'll get to that a little later. Now, on the carbon side of the seal, oh boy, more directions. We hate directions here. We still do it Tom's way. These are nicely wrapped. So we'll get it out of the cellophane. And here's the new spring in the impeller washer, which we'll use out of this one. So I'm going to set it aside with the new seal parts. But if you notice the carbon, if you notice the difference between the two boots, he's missing the important part of the seal. He only has the retainer part of the seal. And if this pops out, look at this. That's what he's missing. That's one side of the mechanical seal. That's why his pump is still leaking. All right? So we're going to use this in a little bit once we get to it. This is the old one. It's no good. We're going to throw it away. All right, now we're going to go to the cover plate. We're going to remove it off of the motor. We'll set the motor aside, and we'll take a look and see what the ceramic and the, my lovely brass ring are doing inside the cover plate. Oh, he must have done something wonderful here. I think he did. All right, John, come on in. I want to show him something because this is going to be a piece of work also. He, and he said he installed a new brass shaft slate, which is right here. If I show you this, I'm going to get something to point with. Right here. Notice the end of the shaft sleeve. It looks like he hit it with something. If you notice the ridge right here, it's like a mushroom. This cover plate should slide right off the motor shaft. It's not. It's being hung up by the brass shaft sleeve because he hammered it onto the shaft. So let's take the cover plate off the best we can, and we're obviously going to have to change the shaft sleeve after we inspect the cover plate, the ceramic, and the brass ring. The only option I have is just to try to lift it straight off the motor, and uh, we'll see what happens. All right. So it wasn't as bad as I thought. And if you want, John, I'm going to, what's the best angle for you? Probably, Doesn't matter. let's set it up against something here and see if you get a better picture. Yep. But look at the end of that shaft sleeve. It's ballooned on the end, just like when you over impact a piece of brass, aluminum, copper, it bulges out. Now, in reality, it's really probably not going to hurt the seal function but it still shouldn't be doing what it's doing, so I'm going to replace it. All right, we've got it taken apart. We're going to set the motor aside for now. We're going to inspect the cover plate, clean it up, and get it ready for the seal. All right, so we need to get the white ceramic out. We need to inspect that brass ring, and then we'll also inspect the, um, the cast that where, where the rubber gasket sits to make sure it's not pitted or too bad to put a new seal kit back in. So I'm going to punch the ceramic out. We'll take a look at the brass ring. I like to just flip it over. Healthy screwdriver. And the, you can see the black gasket in there and the white ceramic. Put it where the black gasket is and just give it a twist. And it drops right out the bottom. All right, now I'm going to flip it over. So there's your rubber gasket. And there's your seal. Now, if you noticed, when I pulled this out, he had this in backwards. I'll put it back together the way he had it. 
He had the gasket in properly, and if you notice, he put the brass ring in properly because the dimples are up. But he had the ceramic in like so. If you look at the ceramic, and John, I can wipe that off for you if the, if the camera's not going to get it. If you look at the ceramic, there's grooves in the ceramic. Those grooves are meant to be flipped over up against the rubber gasket. So technically, the seal should be like so. So he had that in backwards with no carbon. So we'll take this out. We're not going to reuse it. We're going to throw that away along with the rubber gasket. We'll inspect the cover plate. We'll see how he put this brass ring in, and then we'll go from there. This area right here is crucial, OK? If you notice his brass ring, he installed it correctly. Dimples up, and it's bottomed out, and it's nice and smooth around the edge. So I'm not going to replace it. I'm going to leave that in there. But if you do notice where the seal cavity is, I've mentioned this in videos before, with a different seal kit, if you notice, there's a raise in the cover plate right here. And it's, the integrity is still pretty good, but it's getting rusty and pitty. It's getting rusty and pitted. Just make sure this is cleaned out, and you don't have to remove this inner ridge because, John, I'll grab the gasket. The gasket that goes in there is meant to sit on the inside of that raise. So on this one, you don't have to worry about taking the raise off of the cover plate. This is the seal kit that's been used in this pump forever. All right, so the cover plate's in good shape. We'll clean it up a little bit, and we'll get to that in a minute also. We'll set it aside. We'll bring the motor in, and we're going to take the shaft sleeve off the motor. Now, if you notice, he's got a keyway in the shaft. I have to get that key out of there first. And if you have worked on these before, you'll notice it's a woodruff key, which means it's like a half moon with some notches on it. You got to be careful when you're removing them so you don't ding them up too bad because they're a son of a gun to put back in sometimes. So we're just going to try to get our screwdriver in here into the back lip of it and try to pry it up with the motor frame. And I'm just going to give it a hit and see what happens. Nice. It went flying across the room. That worked well. I'll go and find it in a minute. All right, we're going to take the shaft sleeve off the motor. First, I went and found my shaft key off of my motor. We're going to set it aside, and we're going to reuse it. It was way over there. All right, so Johnny, I don't know. You want me on the other side of the table for this one, or? Doesn't matter. Let's, um, I don't want to start the, the pretty felt for the filming on fire, so why don't I come on your side over there? I'll angle it like so. Is that all right? Yep. All right, I'm going to light the torch. Now, when I heat up these shaft sleeves, I like to heat them up slightly away from the motor, trying to protect the bearing that's in here just in case. Here I go. We're going to get one shot at this. Watch yourself, John. You can watch it start to smoke a little. You can also watch the brass start to change a little color. And I usually take a screwdriver and put it in the keyway. And give it a little spin to get to the other side so John doesn't have to move the camera. Good and hot, nice and smoky. All right, I'm first going to take my screwdriver and see if I can just pry it off from here. Nope, it's not going to be easy. All right, what you want to do, middle of the shaft, take your hammer, get a groove in it. Get a little bit of a notch in that thing. Then put about a 45 degree angle on it. And give it a good hit, and hopefully it'll fly off. All right, starting to come.
And you might have to reheat it. I just might have to do that also. All right. Let's go. Give it one more shot. Otherwise, I'll have to peel it off of the shaft. I notice there's some moisture coming out, so maybe that's a little Loctite, hopefully. Find my notch. Oh, <laughs> I think this is worse than smoking. <laughs> All right, here we go. There we go. Move forward. If you notice the gap right here, John, mm -hmm. start to slide off. Oh, watch your eyes. All right, we're going to let the shaft cool. Take my screwdriver, clean the shaft up, make sure everything's in good shape, get the Loctite on there, get it all buffed up. Then we'll start putting it back together. Nice and hot. We'll help it get cold. You might have to let it sit 10 minutes or so. All right, we've got the shaft cooled down. Johnny, I'm going to walk to the other side, but if you notice, I just noticed this now when we were taking the shaft sleeve off, there's no water slinger either. So no carbon side of the seal. The ceramic side of the seal was installed backwards. No water slinger in a beat to death poor shaft sleeve. This guy's going to think he's got a new pump by the time I get done with it. All right, now we're going to clean up the motor, get the shaft sleeve put on it, let it sit for 5, 10, 15 minutes, however long it takes us to clean everything up a little bit before we start putting it back together. So we'll clean the motor up. We want to get all the lo uh, old loose Loctite off of this shaft, and if you notice, I can touch it. It's been about 10 minutes with a wet rag. Good time to check the motor. Any end play? There shouldn't be. These are ball bearing motors. No end play, no side play. If you've got any end play or side play, it's new motor time. Possibly a new pump, depending on how far we have to go with the repair of it. But for now, Motor sounds good, feels good, no play in the shaft whatsoever. We're going to put the shaft sleeve back on. Let's get it cleaned up. All right, let's get this stuff off of here. And if you notice, it's starting to come up pretty good. Lots of Loctite on here. And there might be some corrosion on the shaft also. But the Loctite will make up a lot of that difference. So if you can clean it up, Get the Loctite off of there. You might get another five, 10 years out of the pump by putting just a new shaft sleeve on and getting the shaft all cleaned up. All right, I'm gonna switch over to my emery cloth. We're gonna clean up where the shaft sleeve goes with some emery cloth. You can also clean up where the impeller goes on, get little grunge off of there, get ready for the key to go back in. So we'll just, in general, clean up the whole shaft. All right, we've cleaned it up a little bit, and if you notice, he's getting some decay on his shaft. You're getting some pitting and shaling of the, of the shaft, whether it's from years of service, cavitation, whatever the case may be, he's getting some pitting and grooving. It's not the greatest looking, but when it comes to the shaft sleeve, you can fudge a little bit with it. The key part of this one is the front of the shaft sleeve. You still have all good steel around the front of the shaft sleeve and also the taper. And I'll show you on the old shaft sleeve where he dinged it, it's actually tapered. So when you put it on, which I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this on because I nicked it. I'll show him with the new one, John. We'll get to that in a little bit. As long as the integrity of this shaft and the taper and the front of this is good, you can reuse it probably one more time. I, if we, this comes up again in about 10 years, I think he's going to end up needing a new motor just because the shaft is shot. What I'm doing is I'm doing a little bit more cleanup on the shaft because as I looked at it closer and took my new shaft sleeve and compared to where it's going to have to go on the shaft, the back of the shaft here almost looks like it's tapered, which is telling me that there's still something fused to the shaft that should be a shaft, a, a smooth, straight shot on. It should not be beveled or tapered, it, tapered in any direction. So what I'm doing is I'm just cleaning up some of this metal here, whether it's fused for something else or a little decay, but I got to find that ridge that's on the motor back here, make sure that the sleeve butts up against it. So we'll just take it and there we go. 
clean some of this stuff out of here so I have somewhere to rest that shaft sleeve. Could be Loctite, could be a little extra metal from anything. Decay, rust. Alright, I should be able to buff the rest of it out with emery cloth. If not, we'll continue and then we'll get back to putting the pump back together. Alright, we've got the shaft cleaned up. we got some of the corrosion chipped off of the shaft. I've got the old one sitting here. Get rid of it. You don't want to accidentally try to put on the old one when you've got the Loctite on the shaft and inside the shaft sleeve. Again with a shaft sleeve. Now this is not your standard shaft sleeve that I've shown you in the past. It's, it's got the end on the shaft that butts up against the rays on the shaft. So there's a little bit of a different way to do this. I still like to scuff up the inside of the shaft sleeve. Get some of the uh, crud that's in there out of there. Of course I'm probably adding more crud with the emery cloth. but. Clean it up just a little bit, get it a little shiny, wipe it out with your towel. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Loctite out of the bag. Oh, there's those stupid, uh, those stupid directions again. We don't use them always Tom's way. Get it out of the bag. It's just a twist cap. So we'll get the motor positioned. I'm just going to wing this, John. Uh, I'm, I might have to move the motor on you, so bear with me. Now, because it's not the standard type sleeve, it's going to go on tight, and I'm going to use a piece of pipe to press it on. I only like to hit them once or twice. For the simple fact, you saw what the other shaft sleeve looked like. It was mushroomed on the end, so it's, this is going to be hit or miss. And I don't know, maybe for the video's sake, I'll have to go get another one and take this one off. So we'll take the little end off of the Loctite. Now again, normally I put it on the shaft and move the shaft around to get the Loctite all the way around on the inside of the shaft sleeve. But because it's such a tight fit, I put the Loctite inside the shaft sleeve. So as you're putting it on the shaft, it'll push it back towards this end of the shaft. Therefore giving a good coating of Loctite up here. All right, John's getting a close-up of the shaft sleeve. I was talking about how it's not your standard shaft sleeve. If you notice, it's open on one end. And if you, you're looking through, John, mm -hmm. you notice that it almost looks like there's a stop at the end. The stop goes on this edge right here of the motor. So you know it's going to bottom out right here. It's an automatic stop. But it's still a tight fit. It has to be pressed on. If you don't have a press, I'm going to use a piece of pipe. And again, like I explained, Loctite on the inside of this shaft sleeve, because as you force it on the shaft, it's going to push the Loctite forward. If you were to put it on the shaft, as you're putting on the shaft sleeve, it would push it back on the shaft. I'm still going to coat the shaft with some Loctite, but the majority of it's going to be on the inside. So let's get the Loctite. Now I'm going to put some Loctite right here on the inside of the rim. I don't know if the camera, you can kind of see it in there. Let it roll around. Okay. Now you don't have a whole bunch of time to do this, so squirt it in here. And the balance of it, I'm going to put right here on the shaft. You getting there, John? I'm going to rotate it on you. This is going to be quick. All right, here we go. Shaft sleeve on the shaft. Push it on as far as you can with your hands. Grab your pipe and your hammer. John, I'm going to move this quick. Here we go. Couple of shots. Let's get this thing bottomed out. Notice how it's going on quite smooth in the beginning? All right, it hit the raise. It's right on the rays, everything is set in place, and if you notice, it's spinning nice and true. All right, I'm going to get my rig real quick because we're getting it on the threads in the shaft. You don't want it on where the impeller sits. We'll get this cleaned up real quick. <coughs> and because I'm a little paranoid because I didn't let it sit too long to wipe it off, I'm going to hit it one more time. 
with my press here, and it still sounds like it's bottomed out. All right? We're going to let that sit for 10 or 15 minutes and let that lock tight, lock that shaft sleeve on there. We'll go to the cover plate and start working on that. All right, motor's done. We're going to set it aside before we put the whole thing back together. We'll get the cover plate back in here. We'll get the cover plate put on the motor. We'll go from here. Cover plate. We took it off. We said the brass ring was okay. We made sure that the the decay that we see down inside the cover where the white ceramic and the, and the rubber gasket sit is decent. It's still reusable. The pump is starting to see the years. All right, get this face right here. Just get the decay off it. You know, the sludge, the icky stuff. And if you need to use a wire brush or a wire wheel on a drill, go ahead. You're not going to hurt anything. Get that wiped out. All right, looks good and flat. All right, we got it cleaned out. We're going to leave the brass ring in. Uh, if you need to know how to put that brass ring in, same concept. I did it on the Series 100 uh, seal kit change out. It's easy, but it can be hard. But we're going to reuse this brass sleeve ring because it's still in good shape. So what we'll do is we'll bring the bottom side of the seal kit in with the rubber washer, the white ceramic, and of course the brass ring that comes with the seal kit, I wouldn't throw it away. I'd keep it as a spare if you do a lot of work on some of these V&G pumps. That way you don't have to buy another seal kit if you kink one when you're replacing it. So I'm going to set it aside and save it. Gasket goes in first. Take a screwdriver. Get it in place or your fingers. doesn't matter. But if you notice, it fits right around the outer part of that brass ring, but under these dimples right here. Okay? The dimples are for the beveled part of the ceramic. It keeps it from spinning, keeps it stationary. Once again, I'm going to emphasize this. White, shiny side up because it's got to meet the carbon. Do you remember the gentleman that sent me this pump? Had the back side of the ceramic with the grooves up. Grooves always go towards the gasket. So we'll set this down into place. And if you notice, my hands are dirty. I'm not worried about it. You're not going to ruin anything with having dirty hands. Just wipe everything off before you use it or go wash your hands if you're not comfortable with it. All right, I got the white ceramic set in place. The two dimples are at the bevels. Okay, we're going to set it aside for a second, and I'm going to bring the motor in. We're going to check it out. We're going to make sure that the sleeve is in place. It's perfect. It's nice and tight. It's cool. It's ready to go. And if you notice, it's spinning nice and true. That's exactly what you want to do. That means that it's perfect in place. The shaft wasn't perfect. Loctite made up a lot of the difference. I'm going to bring my emery cloth back in. And John, I'm going to, if you want me to come to that side or you want me to stay over here? Sure. Come All right. On. I'll bring it over there. We're just going to buff the shaft sleeve up so it'll accept the carbon side of the seal. We'll get the water slinger put on the shaft. And then we'll go from there. You're not trying to take off any of the brass or do anything like that. Just clean it up. That's it. Nice and shiny. All right, we're going to try to put this all back together in one shot. So let's get the water slinger put on the motor. Water slinger goes on before the cover plate. And of course, the use for the water slinger is if the seal kit lets loose, it wants to travel up the shaft. It disperses the water away from the bearings of the motor. So we'll slide the water slinger on. Some stuff for you here. Slide the water slinger on over the shaft sleeve. We'll slide it all the way back. Right into the groove, right after the shaft sleeve itself. Okay, we've got it set in there real nice. Now, if we need to move it, it's going to be on the outside of the cover plate anyway, so we can move it up on the shaft or back down onto the shaft sleeve when we get done putting it back together, but for now, that's good. 
We'll get the motor in here. I'm gonna wipe off the shaft sleeve a little bit because I've been farting around with my fingers. And I am starting to get dirty, so I will clean them a little bit before we start getting things back, put back together. Let's get the cover plate in. Now I'm gonna tip the motor up. We're just gonna take the cover plate and drop it down on top, being careful that you do not catch the ceramic side of the seal with the top part of the shaft sleeve. And we'll slowly drop it over the shaft, right down on to the motor itself. And you can let it rest right there. Now depending on how you took it apart, they had it apart before I got it, so I don't know how they put it together. It doesn't really matter where the cover plate goes. It's still going to bolt into the same place where they want it to on the volute body when I send this back to them. So I'm just going to bolt it down wherever the bolts match up. <coughs> we'll get our bolts in here. All right, I've got them all finger tight. We'll get our wrench. And just like in all my other videos, Go opposite, don't go in a row. So I did this one, I'm gonna go around to this one. Snug, not tight. All right, check the other two. They're still good. All right, let's get the carbon side of the seal on. I'm gonna leave it sit like this. Actually, I'm gonna show you a different trick. Let's put it on its side because this will help you. So if the carbon part does fall off, it's not completely falling off and you have to find the grooves. It's easier to put it on sideways. This is where I'm gonna wipe my hands off a little bit. I'm finally getting dirty in a video. I'm not gonna run off in soap and water. It's not worth it to me. I'm not gonna hurt anything as long as you wipe everything off when you get done with it. All right, I'm gonna put the seal kit on, but before I put the seal kit on, remember the key that went flying across the room? I'm gonna put that on the shaft here real quick, right here, and it looks like it's in good shape, but I'm still gonna take it in case I dinged it a little bit and on my emery cloth. Just give it a good quick swipe on all the edges. Let's get some of the burrs off so it'll go into place easier, okay? We'll take that. We'll set it in the groove. And we'll take a soft hammer. I got one with a little rubber end on it, okay? And we'll just knock it into place. Okay, and if you notice, it's tipped a little bit, okay? I just take a screwdriver and set it on this edge. Just give it a little tap to try to get that thing squared out a little bit, like so. Now it's nice and square. Now we can put our seal kit on, all right? As usual, liquid soap. You got your spring, your impeller washer, and the, uh, the carbon side of the seal. Liquid soap on the shaft sleeve, nice and sloppy. It's not gonna hurt nothing, get it all over the place. Same thing with the carbon side. Soap, get it all over that rubber part. And if you notice, the carbon wants to fall out. That's why I want to put it on sideways, not straight down. And it just might fall off when I'm putting it on sideways, and I'll just show you how to watch it go on. All right, I'll wipe my fingers off. Here we go. Over the shaft, onto the shaft sleeve. Equal pressure both sides of the upper ring of the seal assembly and just push. And if you notice the carbon stayed, and John I'll turn this for you. See the dimples? The carbon is buried up inside of this seal plate here. So we're good and tight right there. All right, now I'm gonna whitewash off my fingers a little, get the excess soap off of here. And again, just like in all my other videos, Screwdriver, right here, up against the shaft sleeve, but on that inner ring of the seal, and just lightly tap. You're just trying to seat it in place. And on the other side, tap it, okay? It's seated. Now we'll take our spring, 
like so. And the impeller washer, like so. Now I'm going to rotate the motor a little bit on so I get the, the key sitting straight up. And I'm going to grab the impeller. All right, impeller, lock washer, and impeller nut. Put it all together. All right, here we go. Keyway in the impeller, up, like so. Now, try to match it up to the key. All right. Lines, oh, that slides on real nice, but I'm still going to do it this way. Both sides of the cover plate, use your fingers. Slam that thing on there, like so. Hold it in place. Lock washer onto the end of the shaft. John, I'll try to spin it for you. Onto the end of the shaft, OK? This is the fun part. Get that bolt in there and try to spin it on that shaft. Just get it started. And once again, I'm supposed to know what I'm doing. Boy, it's a good thing I got small fingers. You guys that got big fingers are in trouble. All right, I'm going to grab my wrench, and I'm going to try to use my socket to spin that on. Did it stay? I hope so. Let's see what happens. It did stay. All right, I've got the bolt started. I can let go of it, and the impeller comes back a little bit. It's not going to hurt anything. Get my ratchet and my screwdriver in here. Move my soap aside into the veins of the impeller, ratchet in the end, tighten that nut down. All right, it's snug. All I want to do is flatten that lock washer. Just give it a little twist, like so. It's tight, OK? It's all cleaned up. It's ready to go. I'm going to send it with a gasket back to the customer. He's going to put it back in the system. Now, I am going to suggest one thing to him in a letter. If you notice on the motor, this happens over time sometimes, but it also happens if you're over-amping the motor. The plastic protection covers here are starting to turn brown and wrinkle, like they're melting. That tells me that the motor is running maybe a little too hot. Maybe the pump is oversized. Maybe the impeller is too large. Yeah, it's a 10-year-old pump, but he still should not be getting this discoloration on his motor. I'm going to have him check his amp draw. I'm going to have to uh, have him check maybe his discharge valve to see if it can bring the amp draw down. I'll give him some suggestions. All right, so in the meantime, it's all set and ready to go. We've corrected his mistakes. I'll have a phone conversation with him when I get back upstairs. But he should be able to rewire this thing, install it, open the system up, and he should be back in business pumping water, and I'm going to smoke.